What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah. Good evening. Uh, the the happy Thanksgiving edition, I guess. Yep. Yeah, we we don't have any dressing. No, we don't. No dressing. No turkey here tonight. No, and I actually had Chick Fil A for dinner. Although, although I don't know if we got any turkey. No, what, this what, is. What are, what are you drinking there? Actually, this is. Uh, I got to give a shout out to our friend Tim DeSalvo. All right. Yep. He uh, he hooked me up with this. You know, he's a Blanton's man. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, and this is not Blanton's. This is Carl T. Huber's. Have you ever okay. had it? I've never had it. I had none either, but it's pretty good. And it's 109 proof, so it put yeah. a little hair on your chest. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. So th- I, I, thank you, Mr. Tim. I, I, in, in honor of the holiday, I should have got some turkey, some wild turkey. But now. I wonder, uh, every, a lot of times I'll buy, and I am not a Jack Daniels guy at all. Like at all. I really don't like Jack Daniels, but they have like a winter Jack. That they come out with sometimes near Christmas, and I will occasionally buy some of it. Is it like spiced or something? Or? To be honest with you, I don't even remember. Okay. But it's a snow, like a scenery of snow on the bottle. Okay. I guess I'd, I probably haven't bought it in like two years, but yeah, I used were, to buy that. a little bit woke. And, uh, yep. Kind of kind of burnt me. I, I, you know, even though we're Tennessee boys, and I've drank Jack, I've got some, I know I've got some Gentleman Jack. I think I've got a bottle of single barrel too if i had to drink jack daniels i'd prefer gentleman jack we actually i've got a bottle of single barrel that's the ducks unlimited edition which i don't know if that really means anything it's got yeah the duck band and it's I, I got it actually as a gift at one of our wedding showers <laughs> really we, uh, we had like one of those deals where you stock the bar and i'm like i just put it away but anyway i bought that for you yeah well, I appreciate yeah it. when i was like 15 i was about to say that 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 uh, gathering was in Knoxville. I don't remember you being there. But I was there. <laughs> oh, okay. I was in the wedding. I was one of your no, ushers. No, I'm talking about the the um the shower. Yeah, the the stock. I hosted party. it in Knoxville. Yes. Man, we we had. I remember we had a margarita machine. And like, <laughs> so I, th- 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 that may be why I don't remember you. No, hosting. no, I did not. But seeing how old was I when y'all got married? So I got married in '09. Okay, I'd have been 18. Yeah. So if I did Still buy you any alcohol, yeah, it would have been a little bit illegal. Yeah. But, yeah. I was going to say, man, you don't even remember as an usher in your no, wedding. I remember the wedding. I, I was I, like, dang, I, how plastered I, were I, you? I was saying, I remember that party too. And I was like, you were not there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, what are you drinking? Woodford. Woodford. Yeah. I say, which, you know, I was about 15 or 20 minutes late getting here because I was. Well, I was yeah, finishing I up had my it. Thanksgiving I, cooking. You know, I knew what to expect. I told Marcy I was in there. I said, I told him 845. I said, so he'll be here about nine. Well, and normally <laughs> it's because I'm like trying to get kids in bed. Well, my wife and kids are gone. Where are they? Out They're, of town? They went to my in-laws. Gotcha. And, um, it, um, but I was trying to cook because I my brother's having a small gathering tomorrow night. Um, just a few people. Yeah. Um, a couple other doctors from the clinic and whatnot. And I, I was like, I'll make some meatballs. Well, I... Time kind of got away from me, and I was pulling the last of them out of the <laughs> oven right at the time that I was supposed to be here. And playing with balls instead of being here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm guilty. <laughs> guilty. So yeah, I, was, I, I was I was reaching in the cabinet. I was like, uh, Woodford. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a good one. That's oh, standard. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's a good choice. Because normally I'll sit there, and it might take me a few minutes to decide what I'm going to pour. Well, a lot of times I'm that way, but I said my supply has gotten right. dangerously low and yeah, Mr. Tim brought me two bottles. He's in some bourbon club, and uh, they send them, I guess, some bottles. And they're single barrel. The other one is a rye. I haven't tried it. I'm not a. I don't normally. I'm not a huge rye guy. A lot of times. A good rye. Well, I, I need to bring it out here. We'll have it on here. But um, two things. First, hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Share this with your friends. Uh, leave us a rating and a review. Do all those things. And then we're getting close to Christmas. Visit agzaga.com. Use that code, Talk Dirt, all yep. one word, all caps. Yes, they've got the Black Friday deals that'll be going on, um, I guess, as you're listening to this. A lot of you, if you're listening yeah. to it when it first um, is uploaded. Um, the toy bundles that we talked about last week, I believe, because I, I actually got one of their, their emails um, today, and, they, and they're not bad about blasting you with an email every day or anything. But, yeah. Black Friday, thirty percent off farm toys, um, and and the gift bundles. So, 
and then you can use the discount code too. That, that's where they allow that double dipping. Um, that, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty awesome. cool. A lot of companies don't do that. Right. Yeah, you can only you know one not, or the not, other. Not valid with any other offers or whatever. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, check them out. All kinds of, of setups. Um, I my kids, I I had. Well, I took Willis deer hunting the other night, and uh, he was bored, and it was an afternoon hunt. He was wanting to leave, and I was like, dude, it's an afternoon hunt. We don't leave until it's too dark to see. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he did not like that, so I was like, here, <laughs> look at these toys. And so he was scrolling through their, their website. Is that a 7140? 7150. Nice. Almost like old Red out there. Yeah. You, well, you got old Red for sale, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You need it? That's what you need. Oh, heck, I'm trying to sell all my stuff. Um I you? sell my farm truck. I saw I shared it on Facebook. Oh, I appreciate that. Man, is, is it always like this on Facebook Marketplace? I'm not a Facebook. Like, I don't even have Facebook. Have is it. this available about 100 times? Well, I've gotten that a couple of times. Yeah. But it's like immediately, like, I had all kinds of people. Like, two dudes wanted to come look at it. Like, we're going to come look at it. Wanted to know all the details. Oh, yeah. Can you get me some more pictures? Well, if you're coming to look at it, you know. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And one guy was coming from a long way away, so I was like, all right, this baby's sold. Like, he ain't driving that far. Yeah. Because the truck's cheap. You know, it's a 20-something-year-old truck. Like, if he's driving that far, he ain't wasting his time and not going in and spending that money. Totally went radio silent. <laughs> like, I, but I assume that probably happens all the time. Dude, it, Facebook Marketplace is such a pain in the butt. You know, I got – I actually – I've got a guy coming next week to look at the Peterbilt. Um, what do you think? He he is he actually just texted me just a while ago and he's coming from Ohio, okay. and so like and he I'm pretty sure unless he gets here and something just really bothers him it's probably sold, um, but I will get I I bet I have had a hundred people say is this available, and then you say yes and then they never respond, and it's like okay that's yeah, all right. <laughs> Um, well, and, I can't tell how many people because when I post a picture of it, I didn't have any interior pictures, mainly because I've not I've cleaned it up zero. Which I'm also like, if you cleaned it out, it'd probably I think you're probably right. And everyone I'm gonna say, it's dirty. It's full of my hunting stuff and tools. Like yeah, I mean it's just it's what it is because I'm using it every day. Yeah, um, which to me that ought to make them like, <laughs> feel cause, better because it's a twenty almost two year old truck now. Mm-hmm. Like oh yeah, well this guy's using it every day. It's a solid truck. But anyway. Um, and so I'll send them all these pictures of the interior, and then they, yeah, that's it. I'm like, just, you just want to see the inside of my truck that you're not going to buy? I like it whenever, like on my Peterbilt, I have 20 pictures up on Facebook of it. I've got exterior, interior, motor, frame, tires. Like, I have taken pictures of everything known to man, and people will message me and say, can yeah, I get some more pictures? Yeah. And I'm like, what? That's a total tire kicker. Yeah, they're just they're just entertaining themselves. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Other pictures can I send you? Yeah. Um, I did have one. It was really weird. This dude commented, and he said, um, "Can you send me pictures of the pictures that you've already posted?" What? Like the ones that were up? He goes, "Can you send me the file? Like, can you send me the pictures of the ones you put on Facebook?" And I said, why would I send you pictures of the ones that you can already see? And he goes, for my project that I'm working on. And I said, no. And I just never, yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, this is weird. So hey, it's, Yeah, the internet's a, it's a the wild inter- streets of the internet. You got a bruiser on camera you getting here? I, I, my self pit cam, it's kind of grainy. I don't think so yeah that is the location where i've got my best deer on camera i did hear of one that you got a hoss on i'll have to tell you about off air okay i actually i mean i was glad you showed because i meant to tell you that i found Uh, out last night well i got another weird phone call today because i got my heifers listed online in two or three different places um so not on facebook because i don't think they'll let you sell animals on facebook you gotta be in the right group okay whatever i ain't going there but anyway i get this call and it's yeah, and then immediately I was like, eh, this sounds like it could be a scam. But they had terrible service. Yeah. And I wasn't even that interested in talking to the guy because he was, <laughs> but not that I'm going to sound xenophobic, but he had like a real accent. But I was like, this dude really, and he was in like dang near like Tampa, Florida. Which, I mean, Florida's a pretty big cattle state. But I want to be like, dude, I don't know if these are the cattle for Florida. Like these are straight Angus heifers. Yeah. Um, bred to Angus bulls. Like they're 
they're not the most heat tolerant. Like most cattle you see that far south, they've got a lot of ear. Um, yeah. And I, I was just like, and, and, and kind of the way he was asking the questions, I was like. It sounded a little fishy. Well, it sounds like somebody that's never owned or bought cattle before. Yeah. Um, I had somebody text me the other day, too, and it was absolutely a scam. <laughs> it, it, it was, I mean, I'm sure just somebody that just fishes the internet for ads and tries to. But I was like, yeah, don't contact me. Again. Dude, I was up at, uh, I was at Baskins looking. I guess probably when I bought the white, that white Kenworth I got now. And. There's a page on Facebook that I see a ton of their trucks pop up on Marketplace. It'll and it's like always the good looking trucks. Like when they get in, like a nice looking Peterbilt or Kenworth, it's always on Facebook Marketplace. So I kind of just started to figure they must have somebody that works there that posts them to Facebook. And uh, so I asked dude up there at Baskins, I was like, do y'all got a person that works here that puts these on Facebook? And he was like, no. And I said, well, this person, Molly McCranahan or something was the name. And I don't mind saying the name because he said, oh, that's a scam. And I said, really? He goes, every time we get like a good looking truck, that same name listed on Facebook marketplace and they'll put the description in there and they're just trying to scam people. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that is crazy to me. Yeah, this, this guy, he said, uh, he asked, blah blah blah, are they are they available? Pretty well, he texted me because I, I have my phone number on one of the ads, and I said, uh, <coughs> they, I said they're still available. He said, is is that the final price? And also, could you kindly provide and more information about its condition if necessary? Its condition, like, first of all, it's not its condition. It's there, <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's you know twenty three head. Yeah, and it, I was like, yeah, like this is. And uh, do you have all twenty three Angus breed available? Like, I will definitely go for two at first, <laughs> and then do you want to know if he could like pay some money up front? I was like, all right, dude, that's already getting fishy. Yeah, yeah I, I, and, and then I text him. I was like, you're gonna have to call me and have a have an actual voice conversation. Did he ever no, call you? No, no, no. And so I was like, this is a scam. Don't contact me again. Well, while we're on this subject, I got to reach you this one. This was a very brief text uh, back and forth that I had the other day. It's been a while. How have you been? I got that. And I don't Just have... from the, a random account? Yeah. What, was this through Facebook? Text. Message? Text. It's from a number you don't know. The number I don't know. It comes out of nowhere. Yeah, Mississippi area code 662 number. And I said, this is my go-to. Look, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Somebody listening, you might find out a secret of mine right here. If you text me and I don't have your number, but you obviously, like, you know me, I always say I've changed phones recently. Like, um, and so this number said, it's been a while. How have you been? And I, I mean, man, you know, I've met people throughout the years. I'm like, ah, eh, maybe. And I'm also not very good at saving numbers. I'm a procrastinator. So, right. They, I said, sorry, I've changed phones and lost quite a bit of my numbers. Who is this? And then this next line was the end of our conversation, but it made me laugh. I'm Nana. Don't you remember me? <laughs> I just, I, I'm Nana. Don't you remember me? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what? Definitely a what? <laughs> uh, I was in a group, <laughs> and I don't know where this came from, Um there's been twice I've somehow ended up in a big group text with people I do not know. Like I've been in that before. Number. And, uh, and, and it's just like one of them was for like a local church. Cause it would, it would always be like, Hey everyone, here's the, here's the, the ushers for this Sunday. And like, <laughs> and it would be, would was, you ever say anything? I never did. I just always just like read, you know, just like pretty much ignored <laughs> the text. And um, yeah, I guess I should have said something. Cause, yeah, there's some poor guy that probably is one digit off of my number that was like, they're like, yeah, Ronnie never shows up. Yeah. <laughs> we, are we judgment? No. Yeah, they're like all frowning upon this guy at the church. He has no clue why. He's like, why does everybody keep giving me mean stares? Yeah. And another one it would always just be random, like around the holidays. Like they would be like, happy Thanksgiving. And I'm like, and I, I and I, I knew none of the other people. Like, Did you say happy Thanksgiving? I, sometimes I would like kind of play along, but it was, <laughs> but it would, it would always be random. You were like, happy Thanksgiving guys. See you Sunday. 
<laughs> and just I'll bring like the that. turkey. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what you should do. But I'll bring the turkey. That asshole. He he, he didn't even or, or no, because it was probably somebody that did end up showing up. <laughs> like, where, where the, the hell? Where, where, where the hell's the turkey? Yeah. Dude, that. I, while we're on this, I got one more I got to share real quick. So um, when I was doing Living Fully Loaded, you know, a lot of my a lot of my guest lineup was via email. Like we would, I would make contact sometimes on social media, and then it would go to email. Yeah. Well, one of the funniest things to me, and this guy, I really wish that I could have made this work because he then actually had a he had a movie come out about him. I'm kind of, I'll kind of allude to him. I won't say his name, but he basically had a movie come out very recently about his life and uh, some work that he did. And it, it was controversial um, on some stuff and, and he got attacked pretty hard. Well, he had shot me the email to his people, told me who to contact to have him on the show. Well, I email him. And I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so. This is my show. This is what I do. I want to have the dude on the show and, and all this. And they they write me back. But they apparently CC'd me to their email to their team of media people. And I obviously they did not intend to do so. Yeah. Because the email was like, hey, this guy has reached out. Um, so and so schedule is really busy. You know, how can we tell this guy no in a roundabout way? I and mean, it was like legitimately. That's what the email said. It was like, how can we? I guess so. And and like the other email, like the another email came through, and it was also along the same lines. And I was cc to the same email, and I was like, I was so I almost emailed and was like, hey guys, like. I am a part of this email discussion. Like, actually, y'all should really go on the show. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. You should do it. You should do That's it. Like excellent opportunity. You can't pass up. Well, I had I was told somebody else about this, and he was like, "Dude, you had it. You should have been like, all right, hey guys, I won't share this with anybody if you let him do the show. Like, I won't bust you guys out and make fun of you if you will just have him do my show. Yeah. Um, so, but and then they ended up. After all that, it tripped me out. They sent an email back to me separately, and they said, due to my explicit rating, he could not do the show. Yeah. And I said, well, we don't have to cuss on the show. Like, if he needs it to be clean, we can. And they just never wrote back. Yeah. So, but it did trip me out. Well, and the whole explicit rating, it's like, you have to put that on there if there's absolutely any anything. It, what could, yeah, person. it doesn't even have to be cussing. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, it did, I think this is considered explicit oh yeah, yeah well we cuss yeah right. but but i mean it's not like we're not like terrible yeah. yeah i mean we do talk about horses with small wieners i mean that could be considered yeah. explicit i guess so yeah um yeah but yes it has an explicit rating so like if we had an album come out it'd have the little parental right. advisory yeah. sticker yeah. on there it'd be yeah. that's kind of cool yeah like limp biscuit um all right so you got a story we got a couple topics tonight we just got warmed up kind of Sharing you guys some, and some of that was ag related. Talking about selling ag stuff. Oh yeah, so, yeah. There no, you I, go. That, I, that's pretty much when I get on my wife's. You know, I, I mean, I, I have her Facebook app on my phone, but it's her. I Is it there, Bobby I, Lee and Kaylin? No, Hanks. no. Let's, yeah. And apologies to anybody out there who shares a Facebook account for my wife. <laughs> yeah, I saw some. There was a meme or something one time where they were like. This is how you know who, who's been, who's done some cheating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah. You, you, I don't trust my spouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it is no shots fired. We have a good friend that has no, a joint I, one. Like I said, I'm not even on Facebook tonight. Yeah. But no, when, when I'm on, well, like that truck and all I've got posted on Facebook, it's, it looks like my wife is, po I mean, it, yeah. technically I guess she has, but it's me on her account. Yeah. But like I go to the two or three little marketplace pages that I look at for used farm equipment. And yeah. Junk, and I never buy anything, but I don't usually message people. And say, is Are you that available? guy? Is this still available? Is this still available? They no. say yes. You say, "Can I get more pictures, please?" And then you never respond. No. Yeah. But um, so yes, a story actually I just saw. Um, I mean this this hit the, I guess the the press or the headlines today. Um, I'll just read you the headline: U.S. egg producers conspired to fix prices from 2004 to 2008. Um, a federal jury ruled, which. Um, Kind of one of the things, and 
I actually first came across it on X. <clears throat> that still is just that's just weird. It sounds like a porn site or something. X. Elon gave his reasoning for changing it. Um, I don't like it. It had something to do with when they were getting started, like X marked, you know, something for them. I mean, marked spot, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the plaintiffs were um, some of the biggest, like, corporate food companies. Um, Kraft Foods Global, um, the Kellogg Company. Um, there were a few others. In the, These were the ones that were fixing the prices? No, they were actually the ones that are going to be, I guess, awarded the damages. Oh, good. Because they buy... <laughs> I mean, which makes sense, you know, that they're, they're buying a ton of yeah. eggs. Um, but I think the actual defendants or those found, uh, the, the egg producers, Cal Maine Foods and Rose Acre Farms, alongside the United Egg Producers and United States Egg Marketers, mm. for conspiring to inflate the price of eggs. Um, and so it was, uh, I think what they, they were, they were, Exporting in like way more than I, I, I could. It's hard for me to say more than they should have been because if they, they were yeah. free to do what they want, but that they were basically choking down supplies on purpose um, in order to raise price. Um, you know, just good old supri- supply and demand. Yeah. Um, and and they were doing it in different ways. So I just thought, wow, that's that's something that uh. I didn't expect to see on the old tweeter machine. Rose Acre Farms. I wonder how big of an operation that is. Um, I mean, they obviously got to be pretty sizable to be making that much of an impact. Yeah, well, and one thing that uh, that, that made it, I guess, maybe even a little more, um, I guess, salacious or, or, or fun, um, it says Rose Acre Farms, a Southern Indiana-based company previously chaired by John Rust. Well, why does he matter? He's running for the um, U.S. Senate seat in Indiana um, for next year. And, he, of course, he declined to comment. Um, they are the second largest egg produ- producer in the U- U.S. Um, said he's actually currently suing um, Indiana's Secretary of State over a contested state law that could prevent his name from getting on a Republic or a primary as a Republican. Mm. Um, but anyway, that, those that, damn shysty Republicans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I guess he, he, he's, he's just trying to get the, the Republican nomination. I guess yeah. they haven't had the primary or whatever. So but yeah, they, they start slinging a little dirt. Um, his opponent, Jim Banks has received the endorsement of the Indiana Republican party and former United States president. Donald Trump. Um, Man, I just don't seem like it carries much weight these days. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it's a lot of the time I've seen here lately that the people that he endorses, looks like they lose. Yeah, I um, I did look up the Rose Acre Farm. They got their website. It's called goodegg.com. And um, so they started out with a 1,000 hens. Looks like in the 1930s. Shoot, if I ever go big time, I'll be able to tell them I started out with like two hens. Yeah, yeah, my me too. Yeah, be, my story will be. Even and you more can impressive. say yours got massacred by raccoons or yeah, something. Yeah, I had before. to start over like eighteen times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, the entire flock was wiped out. Yeah, by. you can be like I started out picking up body parts of oh. hens, and then I went like full blown like John Rambo. Yeah, <laughs> <one of> those <laughs> little bastards, ringtail bastards. Yeah. Man, this is pretty wild. I wish it would show their their size. It does say they're one of the largest. What I think it said they were the second largest second egg largest, producer. Um, yeah, in the country. So, yeah, um, hmm. uh, always scandals going on out there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like well, yeah, it's hard for me to feel. I mean, bad. For, I mean, if they were doing something illegal, but it's like all oh, the plaintiffs were all like huge food corporate food. Yeah, food. well, that's kind of what. I, like, oh, wow, I don't feel too bad. For yeah. This. It is hard for me to. I mean, if that yeah. was driving up prices for you know, the common man out there to put food on their table, um, that, that's probably what bothers me even more than craft. You know, yeah. having to pay because I'm sure they probably just pass the cost on down the line. I, I yeah, I don't know. Um, it says they get today. They have 16 facilities in seven states. Yeah, that is a lot. Yeah, the Rust family. That's what, which I've had to buy some eggs here lately. I've only got yeah. one hen that's laying. We had to buy eggs. Today or yesterday for the first time in like a year. And we have, yeah, we got 10 hens 
No, nine hens and one rooster, and we have one hen laying, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, they are some bombs right now, man. Um, I'm getting an egg a day. Yeah, it doesn't keep up. I, I, eat, I eat two or three a day myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, Marcy is like cooking now, getting prepared for Thanksgiving, and she was like, I'm going to have to buy some dadgum eggs. Yeah. So um, uh, I ate like six deviled eggs. We had our big family thing from my, my mom's side Monday night. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. <coughs> uh, you tore it I up. demolished some, some deviled eggs. <laughs> Dude, I'm... I am still thinking about, I might just start drinking eggs um, because I don't like eating them very much. I eat me a couple of fried eggs about every morning with my, I I just, me some kind of meat and then my eggs go with it. I don't like eggs very much. I, I like them over easy more than I do scrambled. That's what I, yeah, I fry mine. Yeah. I fry mine in my cast iron right beside my bacon. Yeah. But now I, I could drink them and I mean. Whew, I don't know about that. Yeah. People. That's that's the route I've been thinking, and actually, I'm glad I kind of mentioned that because I got that's our company is going to tie in well with that. I'm, I'm oh, not going to go into it yet, but well, I, that's what I. But and then we, of course, we cook with eggs. I, well, I made made my meatballs tonight. I had I think there was four eggs in my in my meatballs, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a two things. One of them, we get a lot of questions on how to acquire land. And uh, like a new guy trying to start out, you're struggling to get land. That's going to be the second thing I get into. And oh, a, and teaser. 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 The first one is uh, growing crops on the moon. You heard about this? Growing crops on the moon. Um, you know, I, I watched uh, Matt Damon grow like potatoes. Um, what was that movie? Um, the Martian. Yeah, never no, watched it. No, it went on the moon, I guess. I guess it was on Mars. Yeah. That is a movie I have not seen. Are you? You have watched Let's a movie. Write this down. <laughs> yeah. I have seen a movie that Logan Hanks has never. I know. Seen. Are I'm you a, kidding me? I am ashamed to even say it, but yeah, I've not seen it. Wow, and yep. that's a fairly recent movie. Yeah, it is. Which recent to me is like less than ten years old. Yeah, like well, and, and my recent watchings are down versus my old oh, ones. Oh, you oh, know, mine are just down. Period. Yeah, <laughs> if it was a '90s movie. If I hadn't seen it, that'd be bad. Dang. But see, I haven't seen Interstellar. Have you seen Interstellar? No. no see, that's a farm in uh, Matthew McConaughey. He's a he's like a corn farmer somewhere, and they send him like to the moon. I may be butchering it. I don't even want to watch it. People are like, you need to watch Interstellar. I've watched a few clips of it, and basically, and spoiler alert, I've never even watched it, so I don't give a shit if I'm spoiling it. But basically i've not seen it but i've seen a clip and he like leaves his daughter he's got a daughter like like the age of our children and he leaves her to go on this mission they're sending him to i think they may want him to try to grow crops like on the moon or something i might be butchering the hell out of it but he in needless to say they send him to space he learns that time travel uh time moves slower where they are and it's really fast back here like while he's on this thing so he feels like he's only gone for a little while and he comes back and his daughter's like 80 and um he's missed her whole life and he doesn't realize it because i guess they were like out of service or something and all of a sudden he gets all these uploads on this computer they got and he goes in there and he's watching it and it's like his daughter and this is the scene I've seen. This this one scene is where I'm like, I don't want to watch this fucked up movie. Yeah, that's depressing as hell. Oh, it is because in the scene he's like watching it and it's his little girl and she's like, hey daddy, I miss you. Uh, you know, I'm, I can't wait for you to be home. And it's like several of those. And then the next one, she's like a teenager and she's like, dad, you know, I just, I really wish you would come home. Like all this stuff. And then the next one, she's like a 30 year old woman. And she's like, I don't even know why I bother like coming on here to talk to you. You're never coming home. And like, and then I think there's like another one. She's like, looks like she's probably 40 and she's still the same. She's like, this is the last time that I'm going to like write to you or going to talk to you. And he's like sitting there bawling his eyes out like while he's watching this and yeah then he gets home and his daughter is dying in the hospital and she's like an 80 year old woman and he walks in and he's like a probably a 40 year old man 
And she's like, I knew you would come back. And then he like hugs her and I'm like, I'm not watching that movie. Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that would be all for tonight's episode. I'm yeah, <laughs> go home and kill myself. Yeah, dude, it was it is awful, awful. Um, yeah, yeah. So if Don't someone comes, watch Interstellar. No, if someone comes to me and they're like, "Hey, you grow some corn. We want to send you to the moon to grow some corn." I'd be like, "Not a chance in hell." <laughs> um, but. Yes, they until, China. Until I get to a thousand bushel an acre here on Earth, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to say I, I've still got work to do here. That's right. Well, China, believe it or not, our friends in China, China, they, <laughs> China, <laughs> they have figured out how to turn moon-like soil into fertile ground. Okay. So, and basically, it's. I don't know anything about the moon soil, so but apparently it's not very fertile. Uh, that, Otherwise, is that would I guess imply? Well, they, yeah, because I even then I've got to looking up growing crops on the planet, and it said the only experiment on growing plants on the moon show that they can grow there, but they die very quickly. So, um, but China figured out a way, and basically it's just getting. They're putting a special bacteria into the soil, which can increase the amount of phosphorus in the soil. And I'm thinking, like, man, I need to get me some of that because I got some ground that's probably about as fertile as the moon, and uh, I need to put some of that well, in there. And I, I mean, here's me just not being a very good, uh, I guess, I don't know, climatologist, whatever. Like, the moon, I, I would assume, like, the temperature and, like, everything else is like a, I mean... You're not just going to plant tomatoes on the moon. Be like, well, and I'm wondering about the oxygen. Yeah, well, like, like all that. Yeah, yeah you know, like it. And yeah, oh, it's, well, it's put dark. This Chinese China stuff on the soil and bacteria, and, and now we can now we can grow tomatoes. Yeah. Like, you know. And my what I got to thinking about, I was like, why? Why would you grow? Like, I'm thinking of the logistics of getting. Can you imagine what a tomato from the moon would cost at the grocery store? Like. What's it cost? Like fifty billion dollars or something, or a hundred billion to send like a to send somebody to the moon? Like, man, I mean, it's gotta be one of those things where they're just. I mean, other than just wasting money, they're. Well, you know, I guess here's what know, it, ten thousand years from now that might be useful, you know. Yeah, um, well, and I see here it says it's to establish long term bases on the moon, so they want them to be able to grow, okay, to feed uh, yeah, themselves, yeah, and that yeah, makes yeah, a little I, more sense. I guess so. Yeah, but yeah. if that's the case. Well, I mean, that's, that, that was kind of the whole thing with, uh, I mean, a the Martian. Alert. Well, it's, yeah, alert. it's been out for like what fifteen he get, years. He gets stranded there, and uh, he's going to starve to death. Like he's doing the math, like he's going to run out of food. Yeah, and so he figures out how to. I think it was just potatoes. Um, potatoes are like superfood. Well, that's why, I, like you know, and, and he had some seed, and I think that's he, and he was a botanist. Like that was his <clears> role <throat> on the mission, and uh. But yeah. Um, so does he just does he like take his helmet off and walk outside and discover there's oxygen, or did he already know that there was there oxygen on Mars? No, he he ends up. I'm pretty sure he like basically made like a greenhouse like in their little. I don't know what it was. Little yeah. Structure that they had there, um, hmm. and then use that to be able to grow. Yeah. Interesting. I I don't know. I've never understood the like. I could kind of see. Like you say on there, and which this does say here, grow crops in future greenhouses on the moon. Yeah. So they would they would obviously have oxygen regulation in there. But I guess yeah, you couldn't wouldn't be feasible to take enough soil from here with them. And yeah, a way to make yeah. I had this like make such the, a make the moon dirt. I had such so. a dumb dumb vision pop in my head when I was reading this. Have you ever seen? Surely you've seen this movie. Now, this is an old movie. It's funny as hell. I hope gonna, you've I'm seen. Bet I haven't. Oh man, I hope you have. I'm gonna be really sad. Have you seen Spaceballs? I knew you were gonna ask Spaceballs. I don't know that I've ever watched the entire movie <laughs> all the way through. But yes, I have seen. So you've seen Lone Star's Winnebago that he flies around in space. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I was just imagining, like I was thinking, a Lone Star's Winnebago, but I was imagining like a grain truck. With a hopper bottom trailer like flying through space, <laughs> going to the moon, <laughs> getting like a load of beans. Yeah. I'm thinking like, man, what kind of premium would you get from like Cargill? It's like, dude, I, yeah, you got the GMO, I non-GMO. I got 
lunar, like, or whatever they call it, like lunar. Oh, yeah. I have lunar soybeans. Is that going to be like, like if regular beans are $13 a bushel, I feel like these got to be like $75,000 a bushel or something like, yeah. you know, um, but I, I did, I just pictured uh, like my W9 with a trailer flying up into space with like, I guess you'd put some sort of jet propulsion on the back. Yeah. You know, I Elon. Yeah. Elon just failed his like latest rocket launch. So I don't know. Oh, damn. Yeah. They like, I think it went up just a little ways or something and like exploded. So even Elon's struggling right now. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yes, people are trying to grow crops on the moon and it's the damned Chinese. Um, so they got me to, they got me to drop the F bomb on the show. We've been, we haven't, we've skirted from that for a while. Yeah. But, it just fit tonight. <clears throat> so, the other thing that I wanted to get into is um, this question we get all the time, and that is, you know, how do you pick up land? And it got me thinking about it was tonight I uh, had been invited by a landlord out to basically more or less just hang out just with hang out. Him, yeah. and him and some of his cohorts at their, their place of work. And, uh, you know, it, it got me thinking later, I went out there and some of the people like this guy, he's, he's got some very influential friends and I guess he's a person of influence himself. And, um, it got me thinking, like, I feel like one of the biggest things, everybody's like, all right, how can I pick up more land? You know, do I need to contact the landlords? Do I need to go seek out a farmer that's going to retire, um, this and that, like, there's all the tried and true. I almost feel like to a degree, the networking element of it gets kind of glossed over. And I feel like part of that's because, man, I would say a lot of farmers are relatively like almost like a lone wolf type. You know, they, right. some of them like, they like the, like being in the field, messing with cows away from people. And uh, to a degree, they're really doing themselves a disservice because man, I think if you're a people person, you kind of can really get your foot in the door. Yeah, I mean, when it, I mean, if if you're in a situation where yeah, you're needing to rent ground, which is most people um, to pick it up, yeah, just little things. And, and I don't know, I, I feel like some farmers <clears throat> kind of get that, and I relate it somewhat to like in, in the veterinary industry, and when and y'all deal with salespeople too, like. A good salesman like doesn't really sell me anything. Like the ones yeah. that I do the most business with, is because you just almost like hanging out with them, right? And, and, yeah. and no, that, that's exactly that's all it is. Like, yeah. like their job is for you to like them. Yeah, that's all it is. And and so in a lot of ways, like, yeah, you get to know people. Well, I got I, I know just in our farming community, people that work ground, and I'm like, well, yeah, he works that ground, but he's a close family friend. You know, they're yeah, you know he's really good friends with their son, you know, whatever, or, or they've gotten to be really good buddies. And they, they, they duck hunt together, whatever, you know, there's yep. a connection like that. Yeah. Um, it's not just totally a business deal where it's like, not nah, a guy bid the most money. And you have those, there are those, Oh yeah. but yeah, honestly, I would say, I bet you a large percentage of it is there's a degree of relationship in there. Yeah. Like, and, um, and I would say, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't kind of build a relationship with your landlords. And again, like I look, I've got some that I don't hardly ever talk to and that's just the kind of almost the way, you know, they, they kind of more or less are like, you take care of the farm, you do what you want to do. I'd rather just be out of the right, picture. Right. And, and it's like, that's fine. Yeah, you know? nothing wrong with that. But one of the advantages, if you do build a good relationship with them is then, you know, you got a little more loyalty on your side for if a guy comes up and he's like, I'd like to get that farm. And he makes contact and he offers. Man, yeah. I've had a scenario where I've had people offer more money per acre than I was paying rent. And my landlords are like, nah, we just, we like Logan. Well, it's like, you know, had you blown off that opportunity for that meeting? Yeah, that, that might not have meant you weren't going to get the farm next year. Probably wouldn't have. Yeah. But had you blown him off and then maybe he invited you again and you blew him off again. And then all of a sudden, you know, he run, he bumps into somebody at a gathering. Yeah, that, that's another farmer, and kind of gets to know him. 
all of a sudden, three or four years from now, he's like, you know what? This dude seems cool. I've gotten to be kind of buddies with this guy. Yeah. And Logan, he hadn't done anything wrong. You know, he's taking care of the place. But, you know, I, I think I'm going to give give a, you know, old John over here a shot at Yeah. It. You know, kind of just something like that. And, yep. And, yeah, you never know. Like you, you said, you get to hanging out, and you never know where those relationships then lead to, you know. Does he then buy more farm ground, or does he have a buddy that owns some farm ground? He's like, hey, you know what, Logan's Logan's pretty pretty good dude. Um, I've gotten to know him. You know, not only is he taking care of the farm, but yeah, I've just gotten really to kind of know him on a more personal level. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Yeah, you'd, you'd love to be in a position like that where people reach out to you. Like, yeah, that's a that's an envious position to be in. Well, and that's where that's kind of the thing that I think about. And I, I didn't really have, I not had not thought about this a lot until I, I had this conversation. I was talking about it with, in regards to land. Like, I mean, I'm working, I work a fair amount of ground for my age, and you know, rel- like, I've grown relatively quickly, and uh, looks like probably going to pick up some more for next year. And so it's like, I got to kind of thinking because, man, I'll be honest, I'm not. I'm not calling landlords. Like, I'm not going around calling them. Like, I'm not a guy that's going to seek out your landlord and run the rent up. Now, if you seek out my landlords and you start trying to run my rent up, then at that point, the gloves are off and I will do whatever I got to do. Luckily, it really hasn't gotten that bad. I've only had that happen a couple times. And I'm kind of like the crouching tiger, like waiting for my moment to pounce when that opportunity comes. But... At the same time, I'm not calling a bunch of landlords. I just kind of just let it be known that I'm looking to grow. And and I try to talk to people. And I do feel like, man, you know, talking to people, just kind of be, befriending them, building a relationship. I mean, yeah, like went over there today. Dude, we talked very little farming. Like farming was – I was there for like an hour probably 5% of our conversation was farming. The rest was like, and it was me and him and a couple of his buddies came in there. Again, his buddies all have, they all are in nice positions. There's even political people coming in. I mean, you know, like I feel like a mobster. Like I was telling Bobby Lee, I feel like I'm in the mafia now, um, but in a cool way. Like I was, I was playing the Godfather theme song when my wife came home. Um, so, you know, like, but it, it's, things i think guys are doing a disservice there because again i do feel like there's probably a lot of quiet guys because you can kind of pull back away from everybody you can just focus on the farm and but if you want to grow to a sizable operation i almost think you have to be a good networker like i don't know at this point in the time you can grow to size without it well in the relationships like you say they they really because I, I, I'm sitting here as I'm thinking, and I won't name any names in my head, like people, and you know, I mentioned it earlier, rent ground, and I'm like, God, you know, somebody from the outside looking in be like, how did that guy? Yeah. But, I'm like, but like I know where the relationship is there, and I'm like, yeah, it makes sense, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, good for them kind of thing. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's, it, it, again, it's the same way in, in the veterinary world. Like we, when I do business, which most of our, you know, they're all real competitive, you know, I'm not going to pay twice as much for yeah, this for the same company thing. because, you know, I, just because I like the sales guy. But I mean, they're all, you know, you know, virtually, you know, you're competitive on prices. See, so, yeah, I know going with the ones that, yeah, hey, man, I really like him. He's, yeah, I got to know him. Been a good dude and, or a good gal either way. And uh, but yeah, it is funny to think like really, a good salesman is honestly just somebody you like you would want to go have a beer with. The, the ones that I and, and again I know there are some clinics because because I and again on the veterinary side because I talk to a lot of our sales guys pretty closely um, they're like yeah like I don't even get to talk to it. like I I just have to go straight to the manager when I get there they they give me the order that's it and of course nowadays you really order online like it's very business oriented and like when I see most of our sales we talk zero business yeah it's all like oh dude you killed a deer yet you know it, you know yeah, when you gonna take me, you know, kind of thing, and you know, or, or you know, well, yeah, let's go, go have some, you know, meet up after work, you know, have a couple of drinks, you know, whatever, stuff like that, and yeah, whenever I'm, we're needing to put in a big order for something like, yeah, run that order through that distributor, yeah, you know, that, that kind of thing, yeah, but yeah, that, 
again, we're, we may be a little more unique. I know some clinics don't work like that where, where they get to go in and talk directly to an owner. But, yeah, like uh, the best salesmen, or the salesmen that are most successful with me may not know that much about their products. I mean, they all know stuff about their products, but they just – they get to know me, and I like them. Yeah, like that, that's their their job is to just be cool and and have us like them. That's pretty yeah. much all it is. Well, and and see, that's what as a farmer, you're basically a salesman. You're trying to sell yourself. Oh yeah. To to the landowners, and I mean, when I went in there to like to this thing today, you know, I didn't, I I did not pitch. Man, I need more ground. You know, I didn't go in there saying like, man, I need to pick up more ground. Um, you know, things are hard. Go this and that. Hey, and go shit that rent down for next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. But no, we had a great conversation. And then at the end, he's like, you know, maybe we can try to figure out a way to pick up some more ground. You know, like that's oh, his shit. suggestion. Yeah, that's music to your ears. Yeah, and I mean, and it's like okay, and so you feel like. You know, then you're kind of like, man, you know, I feel like the clothes are coming in, man. You know, like, and made the deal happen. But, again, it's going in there and just shooting the shit for an hour. And, yeah, I'll go back and I'm going to take my secret weapon with me when I go back the next time. He may be like, next time, he may be like, don't you ever come back. You know, like, <laughs> but but uh, I just got a, a, a hint. I got a funny person I'm going to take with me the next time I go. But, um you're you are selling essentially essentially selling yourself but what i was alluding to earlier is by not calling the landlords and just kind of letting it be known that i'm out there and you know i think there's a weird line you kind of walk here because oh yeah you remember this probably in high school i remember this in high school man the dude that got all the women was the dude that acted like he just didn't give a crap about the chicks. You know, like, the guy that really didn't seem like he cared was the one the chicks really wanted. I'm, I'm probably not the person to ask. Why not? I'm still trying to figure out how to do <laughs> Well, it. Well, the, the, I was lucky I tricked one. <laughs> yeah, well, me too, me too. But, you know, typically the guy that didn't care was the one that the chicks wanted. And... um you almost got to play that card a little bit in the ag side when you're wanting land. You don't like, I feel like if you're burning up the doors, you'll probably pick up some ground, but on the same hand, you almost come off as desperate. And then there's a oh, yeah. weird part of it where they're like, eh, I don't know about well, this guy. Yeah. No, I was going to, on like the, the women thing, the, the one thing I took away from high school and like women and like, and again, we could go down all sorts of rabbit holes. Um, <laughs> and this is just human nature. People want what they can't have. Yes. It's not just women. Yep. But I remember, like, I you know, I had a couple of girls. I was always, you know. Always had a couple of girls? Yeah, yeah, always. Always two at one time. But um, <laughs> um, unless it was three. But, um, well, yeah. no, but some girls that, like, I'd always known forever, you know, always kind of had a thing for them. But I was firmly in the friend zone. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I was in the friend zone, wasn't getting out. Um Whatever. They were good friends. Um, that's all they wanted me to be. Uh, I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> but uh, no, so then I, I eventually I'm, I'm dating this little girl. Yeah. All of a sudden, like, then they want you. You would have thought, I was like, whoa, like, yeah. I've been after y'all for years and y'all yep. hadn't given me the time of day. And all of a sudden, there's another girl out there and y'all are like, Y'all have shown me more attention in the last two days than in the last two years. They want yeah. what they can't have, man. But yeah, and I don't know how that relates back to to farming and. Well, you know, I I guess it's the weird the the part where it would just slightly differ is they can have you um, yeah. in that side, but. Well, and I guess I would say it like this: you 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 know if you're, you know, oh, Logan's farming that person's ground. Wow, you know, that's, yeah, that's wow. If 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 they think he's you know, a legit enough operation. And, um, then I, you know, yeah, he can farm our ground too. Yeah. You know? Which I know there's some of that. Cause there's some landowners, like they don't own a huge block of ground, you know, they, but maybe their friend does. And yep. hey, who's working your ground. All right. I want them to work mine. You yeah. Know? That happens a bunch. And, yeah. and there is like, that's one of the things I've kind of sat down and thought about, like, cause I feel like you need to kind of define like, well, who do you, who do you want to be as a farmer? And, Cause there's guys around here that 
I mean, everybody will joke about some of them. It's like, oh, man, you could call that dude and tell him you want, you got a half acre in your backyard. You need it farmed. And he'll be like, all right, and we'll work it. And they'll work it. And then there's other guys that are like, no, no. And, man, I think, like, I've had to define myself. And I'm like, I don't want to be the guy that will work anything. Like, I want to be, I've kind of gotten to a point where. Well, and you got to ask yourself, like, yeah, sometimes it's just not big enough, but if it's. If it's not good ground, like, are you making, does it even make sense? Yeah. Like, if yeah. it's not productive enough, like, yeah, just to work it, just to keep somebody else from working it, or just to be able to say, I'm working X number yeah, of Yeah, man, yeah, I'm working this many like, ground. Yep. You might be more profitable working, you know, 900 really premium acres than you are working 1,800 acres, but, yeah. You got a bunch of, yeah. You're running yourself ragged to get over all that ground, and yep. half of it ain't worth a crap. Yeah. Know? And I think you kind of reach that point. You know, initially when you're starting out, you know, you basically got to scrap what you can just to get ground. But, like, I've reached a point now where it's like I've actually gotten to a point now where I can say no to some ground. And uh, and I think, I don't know, There, that's where I want I want to get to the point where – like, I want to be that operation where people are like, man, I want that dude working my ground. Yeah. Like, I want to be the, the Mac Daddy pimp of the, the farming side over there where they're like, that dude's a cool guy, man. I want him on my place. Well, a lot of that goes back to, I mean, obvious, you know, things, but like, yeah, taking care of the ground, you know. Yep. The, the, and, and the things you can see matter. You yeah. Know, you know, having, you know, at least relatively well maintained equipment. You ain't got to be driving. And it you ain't don't have an X nine out there. No, you know? but but nice equipment. You're not just spraying hydraulic fluid all over the place. Yeah. You know, when, when you, if you are, figure out a way to like light it on fire, <laughs> so that it'll be like shooting flames yeah. out, so well, you stand not, out. You know the weed or fields not overrun with weeds. Yeah. And you know and 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 you know you're doing things. You know maybe you're you're taking a clipper down there. <laughs> In the middle of the summer and, and clipping around the end rows, you know, whatever yeah. along the road, you know, different things make it look nice. Um, well, and and be different. One of the things that I encourage people to do, and I guess it's like I think about it again, kind of looking at my own operation. Man, I've talked about it on here, you know, I plant green and I plant into some wild shit. Like, I which, know which some people might say, might you know. May, they may not like that. Yeah. Think oh, there's. Yeah. yeah, there will be. I guarantee you, there is some landowners that are like, I don't want them to do. It. I don't want that. I want a place to always be like pristine. And, um, but there's there's also people that are like that dude is like, and I'm not necessarily saying this about myself, but like if they see a guy trying to plant grain or experiment with this or that, they're like, I want that dude on my land because he's like at the cutting edge, you know, like of. Trying just, different stuff. I just wonder how much the general public recognizes that. I think some of them, well, you know, like some you are, explain it to them. I think a lot of them be like, "Oh man, yeah, that yeah. sounds great." But how many how many of them put that much thought into? Yeah, it? Yeah, probably. Well, yeah, not a lot, most Cause, likely. Because there's still a lot of people around here that think a yes, this do all. all field is the prettiest thing. Go <laughs> yes, out there and it smell is. the dirt. Yeah, and, and and yeah, I mean, that goes back to. My childhood, you know, yeah. like that, yeah, that is what farming was. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just smooth and as as oh. clean as th this tabletop right here when you're planting. And boy, it, yeah, it planted so nice, man. It plant nice. And then it rained two inches, ten, and then wash everything later, away. You lose, yeah. I would plant, dude. I I would plant. This isn't me getting off on a tangent here, but I planted some ground heavy it was heavy ground when i planted it this year and it came like a two inch rain and again my planter is set up i planted green and the ground was heavy and i got those you know i talked about my like jagged closing wheels on my planter dude it did all that and then it rained like the next day a big rain and i had a perfect stand and like if i had turbo even just turbo tilled it Turbo till, for anybody that doesn't know, it's very shallow, vertical tillage. It's like two inches deep at the most. It basically is just disturbing the topsoil so that it kind of smooths up anything and you plant into it. And you get like a real even plant depth. Like your seed depth is really even. 
no till man i'll have seeds on top of the ground seeds in the ground like it's just going to happen um but if i had turbo tilled that same ground planted that i would have had to replant probably the whole field and i had a perfect stand so yeah it's uh but don't be afraid i like to stand out and that's why i'm like don't be afraid to stand out like if everybody else is driving boring trucks have the freaking purple truck you know like i'm i've known with my purple semi like it stands out my white kw that i bought are you gonna paint the other one purple no uh no i probably won't paint it but it is gonna get stacks it is gonna get a visor and a bumper and I'm I'm putting my like Metallica looking logo on the doors. Oh yeah, that would yeah. be bad. Like I, I I've got a buddy that does wraps and stuff, and he's done printed out my logos. And you know I have the standard LH Farms, like it's a pretty normal looking logo. And then I got my like one that looks like Metallica writing, and that's the one that's going on the trucks. There so, you go. guys, I mean I I think you get you need to not be because if you do exactly the same thing as everybody else and you farm exactly the same way as everybody else, um, you can pick up a little ground. You'll probably pick up ground slow, and uh, you're basically just going to get the scraps of what other people don't want. But if you're kind of experimenting, trying new things, and, yeah, letting it be known what you're doing, networking with people and not just going, like, please let me work this ground, like, almost just befriending them. And I'll tell you, like, I'm not talking about befriending farmers, like I, I'm talking about landlords, um, your seed and chemical rep, like become friends with your reps and basically, you know, to the point where they want to help you because not only, and, and Hey, I'm a rising tides, rise all ships guy too. Obviously if your seed rep and them, if you get more ground, they're going to make more money as well because you're buying more seed from them. Right. Yeah. So you help everybody, but networking is something i just think is really missed out on and um it's just really a matter of like becoming friends with the people and man i mean i can find common ground with just about anybody really like it it's so i mean and you might end up like me and you might be in the mafia like afterwards so (laughs) You know there's going to be like some fbi like a black car is going to be outside watching me later (laughs) <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm already a, not a fan of the alphabet people anyway so yeah no, me either but um yeah anything anything you'd add on that no i mean i yeah i, I think that's that Yeah, you know, when it comes to that sort of thing yeah just and it you know some people sometimes you're gonna have an inherent advantage you know if you're in, a, in an area where you grew up and so you already know a lot of people um obviously that that things like that help yeah um but yeah something not to be overlooked and i think probably some people do take for granted yeah well i feel like most people think it's all about the rent yeah and yeah, it's just the highest bidder is going to get the ground yeah yeah like you say there are some landowners that that's exactly what they're going to do um they want to basically auction it every year yeah if i have a uh like if i have a person that's like we only do one year leases i usually won't even mess with it like i'm like nah it's not worth it especially if it's you know because you see that sometimes it'll be like 400 acres but they do a single year lease like no because you know every year i mean you can't even build like a that's a sizable amount of ground but you can't do any sort of growing with that because you don't know if you're gonna have it the next year well and and right and and that's not as good for the farm because then you wonder like is How much care? Interested like in doing cover crops, and things like that. That may take a little while to pay off. Yeah, um, you damn sure ain't gonna lime the place. Yeah, you know, yeah, right, right. <laughs> and and like yeah, stuff like that. And and but then too, you know, you think most landowners would understand like, hey, we'll do a multi-year lease because you know over that time frame we may have a bad year this year, we may hit, hit a grand slam next year, but you know the you don't want them to be like, all right, well, you did really good this year, so I'm charging you a whole lot more next year. <laughs> yeah. Because then next year might be the best. You know, it's all going to average out. Yeah. So you don't want them to constantly just be, all right, what's the highest bid we can get this year? Um, yeah. Because then yeah, everybody has a bad year. Well, then I don't know. And I feel like those kind of deals, 
at, at like what point does it stop? Because I feel like you're constantly thinking every year I got to increase my rent because somebody else is breathing down my neck. Yeah. So you, it eventually just, you would reach a point where it's like, this shit is ridiculous. Like I'm paying so much an acre. It's just insane. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. You going to deer hunt in the morning? I don't know. I might. It depends on, I don't know. It's 1030 if I feel spunky enough to go. Dude, man, I'm running. a I'm an afternoon guy. Uh, I've killed more of my deer in the afternoon. I mean, I've killed quite a few in the afternoon. Um, I feel my best been in the afternoon. But I just feel like when they're rutting, you don't know when they're gonna. Oh, you don't. They're, 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 he's he's trying to get it whenever he can. I went yesterday whenever afternoon. Wherever. Um, but yesterday was the day I saw a bunch of deer yesterday morning, but I didn't see a hair yesterday afternoon. See, I I saw a buck yesterday afternoon that was significantly wider than his ears. Yeah. But I couldn't tell. His tines looked kind of short, and he just, I couldn't quite tell if he was there yeah. yet or not. Well, um, so you're going to go in the morning? Or no, you said you got office duty. Well, I do, but I'll be able to go for a little while. Gotcha. Heck, I'm the, I go for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I got, well, I mean, I, I have all kinds of stuff I have to do tomorrow. But Yeah, tomorrow will uh, be a busy day. Even a regular day, I'm like, all right, I, got, I need to go feed cows. You know, I'm I might, good. since we're not going to be podcasting tomorrow night, because we're recording this a day early. Um, since we're not going to be podcasting tomorrow night, I'll be able to, I won't have to stay up real late. So I might, I might get up and go. Yeah. But, um, so I got our company. You got him fired up? All right, so this is going to go in hand with another company that we've talked about on here. And you have you had actually just asked me recently, Bobby Lee, y'all probably have noticed that he has been pumping the iron. Um, me? Yeah. I've been pumping iron? Haven't you been pumping the iron? No. <laughs> I thought you got on the, the protein train. Well, I'm drinking protein, but I'm not doing any workouts. Oh, I thought you were already working out, man. I mean, I, I actually ran. I mean, that's why I'm wearing these clothes. I ran. Oh today. man, running. No oh, man, come on now. I, mean, I, I, I did some. I do some farmer carries every day. <laughs> I, I carry a, a five gallon bucket full of cattle feed. Well, when's the iron start? Well, so I, I talked to our buddy John. Yeah. A week ago today. Yeah. 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 Today's Wednesday. Oh, I can't remember what day. Yeah, today's Wednesday. I talked to him one day last week. I don't remember. What, yeah. My, my weeks are all messed up, or my days off are all messed up because the holiday this week, but. Um, but he hadn't ever, he hadn't, we talked about what uh, my goals were. He hadn't gotten back to me with an actual plan yet. Gotcha. Okay. At the pace it took us to get, to make the first contact. It might be like two months. Yeah. yeah. Before I have an actual plan. But no, I do need to reach back out to him and say, hey man. I'll harass him for you too. Um, well, Muscle Feast, you had asked me about a protein. Yeah. And I told you Way dimatize. Protein. And I think we, yeah, we have. They were a company we've highlighted yeah, I before. Because I know it's on my, my little jar or whatever tub of it the other day i was like oh yeah made in usa yeah i've been working on the american company page on our website okay um it's it is not completed but i have started working on that i've got the companies listed my plan is to put links to their websites beside it but um it's slow go and i so i have not published it with that page yet but um yeah i I was gonna say we did dramatize it's been yeah maybe six months or so ago yeah well, the other company is Muscle Feast. Now, I'm a believer in creatine. That's my go-to, man. I, I am a creatine guy. You need to be because dementia and Alzheimer's runs heavily in our Hank side or Yarbrough side. I don't know. I guess it'd be more in our Yarbrough side. But yeah. um, they uh, creatine is like shown to combat Alzheimer's and all that. Okay. And... And it's also the UFC, you know, I had a buddy that worked in the UFC. They give it to their fighters like crazy because it combats CTE. So it's really good for your brain, and it's also good for packing on some muscle. And so, I mean, dude, I I can – Marcy, she was complaining somewhat to me yesterday. We, she, been, she works out with me. During harvest season, I got very inconsistent to the point of, like, I went, like, three weeks without lifting a weight – and she was staying consistent. And um, I've been back at it now for about three weeks. And she was like, it pisses me off that you, like, just feel right back out. Because I had kind of slimmed down just a little bit. She's like, you just feel right back out. And she's like, I feel like I've been working out forever. <laughs> and, like, she's like, I don't feel like I see any difference. 
So part of that, I think, is my weapon, which is creatine. And I take uh, Muscle Feast, and that's their Crea Pure, which is like, it says here, 99.9% pure. And it's like easy on your gut, so it doesn't tear your stomach up. I take five grams or whatever, five milligram. It's a scoop a day. And um, they are made in the USA, and they're tested on this third-party company called Labdoor, and they're like the highest rated on Labdoor for their purity. Like their products, if you look at their ingredients, the ingredients list is like very short. So they don't put a bunch of crap in there. There's no fillers. Their protein is actually even really good, um, but it's like really, really pure supplements. Yeah, that, which not to take away from it, like that dimatized, like tastes I, amazing. I, I mix mine with milk, and it's like I can't wait to drink that every morning. Yeah, would you get chocolate? I, I got the cookies and cream. Oh, that's right, that's right. It yeah. is so good. Like I was like, I want to try a different flavor. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Dude, no, you you really owe it to yourself to try the Fruity Pebbles. See, I was never a Fruity Pebbles guy. Oh, uh, okay. Like, like I, and the cookies and cream, like, every time I, like, look at the label, I can't believe it's, it's not more unhealthy for you. Yeah. Like, there's no sugar in it. It's yeah. like one gram, I mean, you know. Uh, and I'm like, that's insane. Like, it is so, like, it, it's like a dessert. Yeah. Well, that, I, when I eat my breakfast every morning, I, I I just put some in my milk and put it in my little shaker. And yeah. I drink my milk. Dude, that... Well, we'll, we can highlight Dimatize because when it comes to taste, that is the best. And that, the, I've got Fruity Pebbles and then I think Chocolate. And the Fruity Pebbles, because John was the one that recommended that one to me. And I was like, man, I don't know, it sounds too much. And he said, no, I'm telling you, he's like, he said, it's just like the milk in the bowl after you finish eating Fruity Pebbles. And it tastes exactly like the milk left in the bowl like yeah. and yeah i mean it's it is delicious to drink i'm pretty sure they even have like cinnamon toast crunch or something yeah, like i think you're right yeah. yeah i mean it tastes amazing like if if you want to get in both of those companies dimatize or muscle feast are made in the usa and um uh, and dimatize is rated very highly i mean yeah we've talked about them before but um either one of those is good you know we just want you to be active anyway so uh, but get on the train with the yeah. creatine too. That's what we got to get you going now with some creatine. Lord, I don't. I don't yeah, I need to get on my workout plan first, I guess. But, well, you uh, know what's a great supplier of creatine? Red meat. Red meat. Uh, it's, I'm. I'm I, I may be already <laughs> in as good a shape as I need to be there. Well, uh, I probably am, but I just load her up. I had I had red meat for three meals today. <laughs> for, uh. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had it for lunch. I had a I cooked steaks there the other night. Man, my son will devour a steak. He is like a he is a steak eater. I had I had a little steak, sausage, bacon, and eggs. For you breakfast. ate steak for breakfast. Steak, steak, sausage, and bacon. What and kind eggs. of what kind of steak? A little. I bought some cheap ribeyes at the store. Gotcha. Um, Just cook it in the skillet. Yep. Yep. Just right alongside my other breakfast and uh. What did I have for lunch? Oh, I had, we cooked some antelope the other night, and so I had some leftover antelope backstrap. And, for lunch? And some other stuff for lunch. Yeah. And uh, for supper, I actually had, um, my wife made spaghetti the other night, which of course I don't eat the pasta. And I'd also grilled some chicken breast, and we had some friends over the other night. Oh, when, when, I, when I did the antelope too. So I had an extra chicken breast, so I put all the spaghetti marinara meat sauce, so... Like on the baby. chicken, on the chick, mate, not really chicken parmesan, <laughs> but grilled chicken, but um, that and then put my cheese on it, put it in the oven. I had like so. Hold on, how'd you eat the spaghetti the other night? Did you I just did, eat the eat spaghetti? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, would you just eat the meat sauce? It's like put it. In I the- actually did do that a little bit, just like as my wife's cooking it. Like I'm over there like eating it out of the skin. <laughs> but um, no, my my the kids ate that. Um, gotcha. I don't even remember when that was. Oh, it was actually that was actually Saturday night. We had a date night. We went to Memphis. Um, like oh, nice. one or two nights a year, I go to Memphis. Did you carry a gun? I, I will not say. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you carry a gun in the post office? I don't go to the post office. <laughs> oh, you got a mailbox? Yeah, yeah, we get mail at the house. Yeah. All the way back there. Well, uh, our mailbox is out on the main road. Oh, hell, yeah. you might as well go to the post office. You got to drive a mile. Well, but so- I drive right past my mailbox. <laughs> 
<laughs> but actually, because because of freaking all the shit we order, like oftentimes the mail gets delivered. The poor mail guy has to drive all the way down to our house because there'll be packages. Yeah. Um, poor guy. I, like, I feel bad for him, but anyway. But I always think about the meme. I'm sure I sent it to you when it's like when you carry conceal carry into the post office and it shows Robert De Niro from the movie Heat and he like looks angry. I hadn't, I hadn't seen this one. Man, it's it's good because it's like he's a bank robber in that. Yeah. And he's got his glasses on, like his sunglasses, and he just like looks like a dangerous man and he's like entering a building. It's just a picture of him and it says me when I conceal carry into the post office because yeah. it's a federal federal crime i'm not admitting to anything on air here yeah, you know I, I don't go to the post office but um yeah but yeah um but yeah now postman has to come down to the house a lot of times because um you know, he's got packages like the ones from agzaga.com yep there you go go to agzaga.com get your gifts for your kids black friday specials um get you a fuel nozzle while you're there yeah that's the perfect stocking stuffer some underwear have a reindeer on your dick. They, they do have underwear. Yeah, it's a, maybe not a reindeer. It's an elk or something. Elk, yeah. yeah. Is it cinch or area? Yeah, it's cinch. Yeah. Uh, one of those two. I think the it's toys, cinch. The toys are the big thing for the holidays. The toys, the tools. Tools are cool for, for the big kids to get for Christmas. Um, yeah. Toolboxes. You name it. But yeah, all the toy deal specials. Um, they got Black Friday specials going. Of course, again, doesn't have to be. Any special particular day, you can use that discount code Talk Dirt. Take ten percent off. Yep, do it. Fast shipping. Yeah, do it. All right. Uh, you got anything else? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. You don't have to eat turkey. You, you can. I mean, if turkey was great, we wouldn't. We we would like you'd go out to restaurants and order turkey. You don't because it's not that great. <laughs> you can eat beef for Thanksgiving. Do it. We'll catch you later, guys. Yeah, see y'all next week.